We live in a world of borders, of walls, of boundaries. It seems it's everywhere we go. And there's a huge paradox in this because we often hear of the need to have free trade agreements and, and to ensure that the capitals and money circulate freely. And in the same time, we have all those restrictions to keep people out. Um, and sometimes those boundaries are invisible. We may live in the same city, we may take the same bus, we can uh, go to the same Starbucks, and in the same time we're total and complete strangers. This is what we can find in the book of the Acts of the Apostle, um, chapter 10. It's the story of a long story that involves essentially Peter and Cornelius. Peter, as we know him, is a Jew and a follower of Jesus. And some would say that after the resurrection, everybody turned Christian. No, it took several years, almost a century, be be before there's a clear distinction between Jews and Christian. At that time, uh, they were a Jewish sect. So we have Peter, and on the other side we have Cornelius, a Roman centurion, and the text even specified that he's from Italy. So we have two different reality. People who did not mix, people who might live side by side, but totally don't get together. So one day Cornelius and Peter invites Peter to his place. Peter goes, start to preach about the good news. And when Peter is done preaching, the Holy Spirit found upon Cornelius and his whole household and people invite. The thing is, they are Gentile. They're not Jew. And up to this point, there was an assumption that the followers of Jesus would be Jews. That was the plan, that was the frame, the system that they have established for themselves. And, and those who are not Jews want to join, well, they have to go through becoming a Jew first and then joining the group of followers of Jesus. So that was their understanding and then the Spirit came and Essentially, one way to say it is the Spirit cannot care less of the system, of the plan of the early disciples of Jesus. The Spirit shows up and turns everything upside down. And Peter has to acknowledge what is seeing, what's happening. And this speaks to us also. It, it's not an old story of, of people who had limited mind. and No, it speaks to us. Um, for example, it's the story of baptism. And we have to acknowledge that for many of our contexts, many of our churches, baptism is reserved for members, for people who have come a few times, people who are ready to commit to make some promises. And I understand the importance of policies, the importance of rules, but sometimes, and sometimes people will say often, the spirit move, the spirit show us, move in unsuspected ways and force us to go in places we haven't planned to go. And through the ages, we can speak about the question of race, how we draw distinction between different race, uh, the place of women, for example. There's boundaries still today, and we can talk a lot about the LGBTQ2 plus um, communities the place or the absence of place we gave them. We might believe these days that we are there, especially in liberal churches and united churches, that 
we have moved those boundaries. There's no more limitation. Churches as come as you are. We don't mind. There's nothing more we can do. We've reached that destination. And often it is in those moments that the Spirit shows up and moves us. I like maybe something we have forgotten. And guide us to take the next step. And maybe we need the Spirit because um, for most of us it's difficult. Sometimes and it applies on learning what we have learned in our past and our youth and opening our mind. And maybe it's very difficult for a human being. Maybe this is why we need the presence of the Spirit, the disturbing work of the Spirit. And that's we need to this help to say like Peter, can anyone with all the water of baptism or we can say other sacrament or the love and the compassion of the church? We need the Spirit to help us to say, who am I to go against the Spirit, to try to control the Spirit, to try to control the church of God as I like? as assume and to leave little space for others that's what this story challenge us and keep challenging us to make the next step even when we think that everything is under control everything is nice so that's it for today thank you for watching i remain a lectionary man reverend stefan vermette and until next time Take care of yourself and bye-bye.